Yeah, so how do you do this? So I always talk about how if you're going to put the word Islam before anything, so in this case Islamic psychology, then it has to be something that's actually starts with and is grounded in Islam. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of discussions on, you know, you know, let's kind of throw in a little bit of hadith here and a little bit of Quran here and make mental health kind of Muslim. And there is a field actually called Muslim mental health, which is for Muslim people, right, and kind of their mental health. But it's not the same as Islamic psychology. What Islamic psychology means is that, that the foundation of the actual field starts with Islam and then a psychology is derived or built upon it from Islam itself if that makes sense. So how does one go around go about doing this? Um, it re does require, and in fact, my um, every week in Maristan, I, I teach the, the therapist, I, I go through the book, the book that we, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, were able to finish and complete is called um, Introducing Islamic Concepts in Clinical Mental Health Care. And what that's about is basically talking about exactly what I mean. Here are the foundations of Islam and how do you integrate them into clinical care. So in that training that we're doing, it identifies and says, how do you become an Islamic psychologist? And it, has, it gives you three main things. It says, first, you have to be able to ground yourself in Islam, which means a lifelong journey of Islamic learning. None of us, nobody here, nobody on this panel, alhamdulillah, and none of you either, inshallah, start studying Islam and say, okay, now I'm done. The minute you say you're done is actually the minute you know everything is lost, <laughs> subhanAllah. You've got to keep going and keep going in your studies, even if it's adding little by little. So it's a commitment what, to a lifelong journey of Islamic learning. Secondly, in this country, in America, you cannot become a psychologist, a therapist, a psychiatrist, a counselor of any sort unless you are certified and credentialed by an actual program. So that's either a master's degree or a PhD degree, or in the case of a psychiatrist, an MD, a medical degree. And you need those certifications to be able to practice in this country. So, alhamdulillah, I hope, <laughs> we are having less people going around the community saying, I can be a counselor, I can counsel you. Alhamdulillah, I can give you nasiha. They can give you religious counseling or maybe some coaching, but they're not actual therapists or clinicians unless they've actually done their degrees, certifications, licensing, and exams. Right? They are they are board exams and they're boards that govern this practice for ethical behavior and correct practice. And thirdly, the place in which you're neither sheikh nor are you, you're not a sheikh here and you're not a complete secular therapist or psychologist is that middle space of how do you bring Islam into the story and that's actually learning the way, so it's basically the training that I was talking about. We call it the Traditionally Integrated Islamic Psychotherapy or TIIP model for those interested um, or taking some sort of diploma or course in Islamic psychology so that you can bridge your Western secular psychology training and bridge that to the Islamic training and actually learn the concepts. So there's three steps of how you become an Islamic psychologist.